guys, welcome back to Detroit Garage. Another dyno day for the dyno mule. It's the uh, 1988 silver, uh, Detroit Silver 453T. It's got uh, 100cc injectors in it. Uh, they're 9200s out of a Detroit 8, 8V92T. So on the last dyno run, we made really good numbers. Uh, 248 uh, horse and 660 foot-pounds of torque. <laughs> but that's not the best part. The best part is add 10% to that. What? Yeah, I, I've been running number one diesel ever since I started these dyno runs. In Canada from November till April, we run number one diesel. I totally forgot about that. And uh, I've been scratching my head since I started these dyno runs because the engine wasn't making the power, even stock, it was way low, like 160 horse and uh, 360 foot-pounds of torque. Those numbers are way off uh, stock numbers and it's a brand new engine, essentially. I just thought, well, it needs to be broken in but the numbers never improved. So each set of injectors I added, I was still 10% or more low on the, uh, the numbers. So the other day I was corresponding with a friend on Facebook and talking about uh, horsepower numbers and all these things. And he said, what fuel are you using? And so, uh, I know Mike, Mike if you're watching, you've mentioned this before, but the light bulb never came on. It wasn't until that time I went, oh my God, that's why. So, yeah, so it wasn't until I finished that conversation that it clicked. Uh, so yeah, number two diesel is 10% more BTUs than number one. and. The last dyno run I did, I had uh, 220 horse on veg oil and 220 horse on uh, diesel. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's strange. I must have done something wrong there. And I didn't replicate the, the, um, the test. I just went home and did the numbers and they were the same. And I thought that would make sense because uh, veg oil is 10% less calories than number two diesel. So. Number one diesel and number uh, number one diesel and veg oil are about the same uh, BTUs. So, so corrected numbers. <clears throat> so yeah, on diesel with no math, I made on number one diesel last run. I made 220 horse, 540 foot pounds. With the water math, 240, uh, 600 foot pounds. And with the 1,000 cc water meth, I made 248 and 600 foot-pounds. The corrected numbers. So straight diesel, number one diesel is 242, uh, 594. So 242 horse, 594 um, foot-pounds of torque. With the 500 cc uh, injector from water meth, it was 264 horse and 660 foot-pounds of torque and the thousand uh, cc injector for water meth was 272 horse and 660 uh, foot-pounds of torque those numbers are within five percent of my calculated values I did uh, before I started these dyno pulls um, yeah so five to 10% within my numbers I had. I, I wanted to get to 275 to 300 uh, horse with water meth and about 660 to 670 foot-pounds of torque. So yeah, I'm right in the ballpark. So the last laughs on me. I've been banging my head against the wall ever since I started these dyno runs, thinking there was something wrong with the engine. So uh, yeah, very happy with that. So it is making close to the numbers I uh, projected. And another 
another thing that threw me off, there, there's guys on the Detroit Diesel uh, Enthusiast site, and they've done tests with another engine, and their numbers were way higher than mine, and I'm thinking, how come? Well, it's the number two diesel. It's the uh, number one diesel. It's 10% less numbers. So, very happy. Anyway, back to the dyno. Uh, it's 9 o'clock now on a Saturday. And the only thing I changed on the dyno mule was the uh, turbo. I, I changed the housing on this uh, turbine. So it's got a divided housing, uh, 1.0 AR. And we're going to test that and see how it does, if there's any improvement. These studs were nasty, so I had to uh, replace those. So I put brand new studs on that manifold and uh, changed out the housing, brand new housing. Get a peek at it. It's never been used, so we'll see how that performs. And to keep the testing time down, I'm only going to run the uh, 500 cc injectors on this run in all honesty there's no way I, I am i'm going to be running thousand cc injectors i mean it drinks through the kool-aid here like crazy like a jug of water meth is only good for a few minutes it's gone you know it, it's four minutes and it's gone now that's a gallon uh jug it's gone every four minutes or less so if you were doing a road trip towing and you'd, be, you'd need a 20 gallon tank in the box. It's just ridiculous. So on my F350, I run it on a low flow. I run it, uh, it's got a 500 cc injector. I run it at about 200 or less. It's enough really. So anyway, let's get back to the dyno. I'll get set up and we'll, uh, we'll do a few pulls.
Well, guys, that was a really good run. Uh, we beat on Jimmy for another hour on the hour meter, 1.1 to be exact. And uh, he doesn't like to divide it housing. No, he makes way less power. Um, I'll look at the camera when I get home or the video footage and see, but it looked like about the same smoke, but 20 horse less than the uh, open housing. So the, we're gonna use corrected values now, corrected for the number one diesel. And he made uh, 242 horse and 616 foot pounds of torque on uh, diesel with the 500 cc water injection. Yeah, down 22 horsepower. 22 horse and 35 foot pounds of torque. That's a significant number. So he's not happy, not not at all. You could even tell the whistle in the turbo wasn't even uh, as strong. So right away I knew he doesn't like it. So that's that guys, uh, we tested that divided housing. Ah, thumbs down for that. So what I think I'll do next for turbos, um, just give me a sec, I'll bring out a turbo for you. So this is the exact housing I used. Uh, I have two of these housings. So the other one's on the engine and that was the open housing I've been testing all along. So yeah, he doesn't like this housing. So here's the K27. It's off a Mercedes uh, six cylinder, six liter diesel. It's a divided housing. Uh, so it's made by Borg Warner. It's a K27. It's got a 55 millimeter uh, inducer on the compressor, and I think it's 56 X inducer on the uh, turbine, the outlet here. Divided housing with a bypass. Super quick on the spool up, but it needs the bypass to run on the Detroit. So I'll either test this one next, or this contraption I just finished making. I still have to make a drain for it, but it is essentially a Borg Warner uh, 364. So it's it's got a Borg it's a Borg Warner off of the 6.4 power stroke. It's got an open housing. It's got a uh, 64 millimeter inlet here at the inducer and extended tip technology for the x inducer on the compressor and in the last video I talked about this uh, this turbo it's got the 73 millimeter turbine wheel so <clears throat> I just cobbled together a manifold for it uh, to fit on a T4 manifold so this one should work really well I don't know if the dyno mule will spin this turbo or not. 73 millimeter turbo. <clears throat> turbo is a large turbo. So we'll put that one on. I'm not sure if we'll run this one next or the K27. So those are the two turbos to test. The K27, probably test that next. And the uh, 364. Well, there you have it, guys. Another dyno day on the dyno mule. 20 horse loss with a divided housing. That's a significant amount of, uh, oh, and 35 foot-pounds of torque. That's a big loss for a divided housing. Uh, but anyway, uh, hopefully the other camera's got some footage for the uh, smoke coming off the turbo. <laughs> anyway, yeah, really good. Overall, very successful run. And I uh, got some more data for the data log. Uh, yeah, we're, we're getting close anyway. I've got about another 15 hours of testing, I think, before I can wrap this up. So lots more videos to come. Anyway, guys, thanks for checking in, and I'll uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Take care.